Have you ever had an emoji emergency? We're going to tell you how to solve it because right now I'm talking to Jeremy Burge, Chief Emoji Officer at Emojipedia. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Triangulation, episode 381, recorded Thursday, January 17th, 2019, for Friday, January 18th, 2019. Jeremy Burge, Chief Emoji Officer. This episode of Triangulation is brought to you by Captera. Find the right software for your business with over 700,000 reviews of products from real software users. Visit captera.com slash triangulation for free to find the right tools to make 2019 the year for your business. Welcome to Triangulation. This is the show where every week we talk to the most fascinating people working in tech. And today I am super excited to be talking to Emoji Expert, Emoji King, I like to call him. He's in the studio, Jeremy Burge, Chief Emoji Officer, co-founder of Emojipedia. Um, I feel like a king in these seats. <laughs> yeah, these are, these are very big. Yeah, that we just got that chair just for you, the king of emoji. I feel like a throne. <laughs> I'm lost in this chair. <laughs> So you, we've talked many times uh, on various shows, and usually it's never long enough. I have so many questions. I'm really excited to get to, I hopefully get to almost all of them. Probably Every, not. Everything. <laughs> yes. But before we get to any specific emoji questions, I want to talk about you. Where did this emoji fascination come from? You, you know what was fun about emoji, and I don't, I don't know whether you went through the same sort of evolution on it as I did, and a lot of people I knew is that it was sort of at that time when you'd heard about it and you could unlock it on the keyboard, that mm-hmm. it hit iOS and it was in Japan and you read about it. And then you'd sort of read a blog somewhere and someone goes, you know what, there's this emoji thing, they're little colorful pictures, but you've got to get this kind of slightly dodgy app, download it, and it will trick the system into pretending you're in Japan. And you felt cool. You started sending everyone little emojis in your texts. And I just thought they were, I thought they were fun. I didn't think it would be a, a business or anything like that. I thought they were fun, interesting. And then one day there were new ones and I was like, oh, let me Google which ones are new. And there was, I don't know, no one, no one wrote about it. And I like the details. I like to ask why. And there was no, why is there a frog now? And there wasn't zero answers. So that was kind of the origin. I know I read an interview that you did where you described that situation where you're looking for something yeah. and there are only questions, no answers. And it's like you're shouting into the void. I don't know if we really experience that so much anymore on the internet, but there were definitely there was definitely a time where you would like Google search something and it was only people asking your same question. And yeah. I love it because like in that moment, I would just usually get frustrated and give up. Um, but you did something about it. I started a website with the bits I could piece together. I didn't know much. If you go back and look at the original Emojipedia, it's kind of, it's mostly a list of what does exist. There's no why. But over time, you go back and back and sort of fill in details, meet the teams. And yeah, I, I did not expect that five years later, I'd be still here, still fleshing out some of those original entries about where they came from, why. Uh, Yes, it was an accident, but I'm, I've, I think the details are interesting. So those few people who might not have ever come upon Emojipedia, um, I, tell us exactly what it, what it is, what, how you can use it, um, and what you'd find there. So Emojipedia, it's probably better described as a dictionary than an encyclopedia, although who likes labels, right? But the idea is, like you'd look up in a dictionary what a word means, how people use it. In Emojipedia, you'll look up what an emoji is meant to mean, sort of what its official name is. We have a bit of info how people generally use it, especially if it's different if it's different from the official name. But I guess the difference with that and words are that they look different on every platform. Mm-hmm. So we also list and we provide updates and news on here's what it looks like on Apple today, here's what it looked like last year and the year before, and Google and Samsung. So I guess the most common, some people go there to just because they're intrigued, they're kind of like, what is the definition of this emoji? And they might come for that. Or they just need to know, like, especially if you're a, if you're a social media professional, I'm, I'm very well aware there's politi- highly placed politicians and CEOs in the world who all look up Emojipedia, or they don't, their PR people do, <laughs> before they send a tweet to make sure, does this emoji look okay on all the platforms before I send it. Oh yeah, that's a smart thing to do. And also, I mean, yeah, there's there's a lot of brands that are uh, look to emoji. I remember you remember Peach, the like two thousand sixteen. I remember Peach, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and they really like that was an emoji that um, was recognizable and that uh, it didn't last. The, the Don't launch a brand without an emoji in 2019. <laughs> right. Like there's 2,000 or so, just pick one. You don't have to call it Peach, but I think, I think you're foolish to start a company today and not have at least one of the emojis. I know Glitch is a really good example that mm-hmm. their logo, uh, Glitch it for people not aware, it's sort of a... I don't want to call it an amateur programming site. It's not amateur. It's sort of, it makes programming more approachable. You can share and remix code and you can make sort of little apps on the web. Mm-hmm. And their logo is sort of the fish flags, the carp streamer. Uh-huh. They've got their own version of it, but then there already is this obscure emoji that's got use in Japan. But it means whenever they want to talk about themselves on Twitter, they just, they've got this, the two fla- fish flags ready to go. Right. Think it's smart. Um, now, I've been using a bullet journaling app called Capiscum? Is that how you pronounce it? Capsicum. 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 Um, it's an Australian I, word for bell pepper. Yes, yes, exactly. So do you know Ish and Heidi who uh, developed Yeah, this? I just uh, I was just on one of the podcasts uh, Clockwise with uh-huh. uh, Heidi on Real uh-huh. FM recently. Um, they're great. And so is that an emoji or is that their own... The is the Now how do you pronounce it again? Capsicum? C- capsicum. And that's the name yeah. for pepper. Bell, yeah, bell pepper, pepper. Bell pepper, okay. yeah. Uh, I don't know... Definitely in Australia, we use capsicum, uh, I guess. I've been living in the UK a bit, and the UK is sort of, I, I'd say bell pepper at Subway, because I think they get a bit confused if I say capsicum <laughs> at Subway, and I want it on my on my roll. Um, so there isn't an emoji for that right now, but Heidi, I believe, was behind a proposal for the uh. bell pepper emoji, which is, it's in the mix. It's in the, the first stage where it sort of gets maybe... Uh, provisionally accepted mm-hmm. they call it where they go yeah we're not gonna ban it we're not gonna kick it out we're gonna say well we'll definitely put it on the first short list for next year well we should we should talk about that now you're on the emoji con- the unicode consortium mm-hmm. that came after emojipedia yes okay I set up emojipedia and then after a while i didn't know that unicode existed <laughs> well i knew vaguely i was like oh yeah i guess text is unicode standard Vaguely, but I, I guess I, I didn't. I wasn't aware of mm-hmm. how Unicode fit into the emoji scene at the time, anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, after starting Emojipedia, uh, doing some research, the more I figured out, oh, actually, at the time when they first hit the iPhone, they were kind of being brought into the Unicode standard. They weren't in there. They were only worked in Japan, and Unicode was standardizing them with Apple and Google, uh, sort of leading the way on that. And as a result, now uh, Emojipedia gets half a vote on your emojis at Unicode. Apple gets one vote, Google gets a vote, Microsoft, Emojipedia. We're not a, a full member, we're a, a member that gets half a vote. So I go to Unicode and I'm there. If a vote came up, I could issue Emojipedia's half vote for an emoji. Half vote? Yes. Does anyone else get a half vote? Uh, I believe there's one other, org- I think Monotype. Uh, there's, it's a, there's different tiers of membership and you can okay. be an individual member and participate, but you don't get any votes. You can just uh, say your opinion mm-hmm. and then you get the big shots. Emojipedia is a, a medium shot. So if I wanted to go in and say my opinion, what would I have to do in order to do that? You probably, the main thing you'd do is you'd respond to feedback on the web. So. Yeah. Anyone in the public, although Unicode members get a bit more access to different mailing lists and the like, but anyone you could, for instance, when Unicode says, hey, here's what we're doing next year. Here's the emoji list or here's a draft emoji list. Any thoughts? You could write some feedback in. It would be brought up at the Unicode meetings and you'd probably get a a message back saying, thank you, Megan, for your feedback. We made the following changes or we didn't make the following changes and here's why or it'll be taken into account. Mm -hmm. So that's how you as the outside world could influence it or you could submit a proposal for a new emoji okay let's get to proposals i know we've talked about you and i have talked about this before um it's it's a quite a process mark bramhill um i've talked to him before too because he created the yoga he submitted a proposal for a yoga emoji that ended up being called a person in lotus position (laughs) was the final name for that uh and he has a great podcast going through the whole uh process of that and um so when i asked for questions on twitter gene mcdonald uh mac genie on twitter who created uh App Camp for Girls and many other pieces of wonderful software. She wants to know, um, after she submits a proposal, how long does it take? Uh, this is for the guinea pig emoji. <laughs> I don't know if she's been pushing you on this for a while. Or I've had I've had the occasional tweet from Jean and on various shows where all of a sudden uh, the, the, her beloved guinea pigs uh, get brought up. So if, if Jean, if you're out there, or if anyone else submitted a proposal for a guinea pig, uh, there's criteria on the Unicode website, things like... 
the first thing that would come to my mind is, does it look different to all the other animals? It doesn't mm-hmm. matter that it is different, but does it look different? And I guess you try and make the case. You try and show an image and go, here's a guinea pig and here's... The hamster, I guess, in my head. Oh, there is a hamster. There is a hamster, so that would be... How mm, would you tell the difference? Well, I don't know. I'm no expert. So (laughs) Gene would need to make the case to go, well, look, here's a hamster that you already have. Here's a guinea pig, and here's why it's very distinctly different. Mm. Um, That would be the first step. And then you'd show statistics on the popularity of guinea pigs versus other animals. You don't want to pick the, the worst animal. People sometimes make that mistake. They'll go... Oh, you have this this emoji here of this the fifteen clocks. This is better than that. And I guess the point that Unicode makes is, well, don't compare yourself to the worst emoji. <laughs> compare yourself to one in the middle of the pack, right? If you're better than them, then we'll consider it. But if you're only better than the worst emoji, why would we be interested? So yeah, so if Gene submitted the proposal, you'd want to clear that criteria, make sure that it seemed like a worthwhile addition. And if so, Unicode would get to it. Sometime in one to two years is when it would make the final cut, if they liked it. Okay, one to two years, good yeah. to know. Um, so that that's, brings up a question. I, I, I've heard you talk about how you get a lot of questions like, why do you have this emoji and not that emoji? Um, you know, why are there two ca- different camels and no cheerleader, which is the question I have. <laughs> but, and, and you say maybe that's the wrong way to look at it. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, so there's a few things that happen. So the first thing, if people are proposing an emoji, yeah, just pointing to a bad example, no good. Like uh, uh, Normally, there's a whole bunch of tr- historical reasons that some emojis exist. Um, and you can't tell. You look at the keyboard and there's no way of saying, this one's on here because it started in Japan. Mm-hmm. That's the first 400 or so. They all were in Japan. And even if they arguably might not have been very good, the whole reason that emoji made it into the Unicode standard is to, was to make Japan set compatible with the world. So if you pointed at, for instance, some of the Japanese foods, the foods on the sticks, and you went, I never use them, they're no good, my emoji is better than that, then that's an irrelevant argument because that got in for compatibility. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's also things like Webdings made it in. Uh, Microsoft Webdings, the font, so you get the floating guy, the guy that's yes. sort of levitating. Uh-huh. Again, compatibility. So you sort of need to dig down into the reasons for an emoji. Some of them, often these minutes are published. The camel, I didn't know this when I started Emojipedia a few years ago. The reason there's two camels, not a lot of people know this, but people think Unicode's the top of the tree, right? They think if Unicode approves an emoji, it's done. Mm -hmm. But it's not quite like that. They sort of have this partnership where they agree to work with an ISO working group, and then ISO is an international standard, and they both have to agree on the characters. ISO can also give feedback on the emojis and for the camels, uh, one person or country, ISO is a representative of countries, was basically said, we really want the second camel. (laughs) And sometimes there are examples of emojis that exist because someone at an ISO group might have said, we really want that. And at the end of the day, if, if they can't agree, the standard doesn't work. So potentially some of these, you get two camels or you get what else? The middle finger came through ISO, uh-huh. where Unicode might not go, this is what we want, but ISO is still kind of, it's not quite veto rights, but you ha- they have to agree in the mm. final case. So, so Unicode didn't want the middle finger? Well, it didn't come through Unicode. Oh, I don't okay. think it's, no I don't, one put it t- together a proposal. Right. I suspect, I wasn't there at the time, I suspect Unicode probably didn't want it, to be honest, <laughs> because Unicode wants things that vendors would like. Vendors are generally shy, vendors being Apple, Google, Microsoft. Um, so I suspect that Unicode, all the vendors, either wouldn't have wanted it, but... They clearly did not not want it enough that they blocked it all together. They mm-hmm. were clearly okay enough with it, but it, it didn't come up through Unicode channels. Right. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so how does, is Unicode, it's not a non-profit. How did they make money? Unicode is a non-profit. Oh, it is a non-profit. Yeah, so all the companies that are Unicode members are for profit. Google, okay. most of them, Google, Apple, Microsoft. Um, but Unicode itself, they only make enough money to cover expenses. Uh, oh. So companies pay a membership fee to be a Unicode member to get their vote. Uh, Mojipedia pays an annual membership fee and that gives us the right to vote on things. But at the end of the day, their money is, people think, oh, Unicode must be loaded because like <laughs> emojis are so popular. Do they right. get like a licensing fee? Yeah, or... every time I use the crying yeah. laughing emoji, they get money. No. Yeah, <laughs> and Unicode don't own images. Like the images for each emoji come from Google or Apple or Microsoft. Oh. Everything in all the Unicode charts, the images are often public domain or Unicode, I said, it's not they don't own anything. They do own the, the 
the charts and the, the standard, but effectively it's just run for the benefit of the companies. Mm. I mean, it's so fascinating. I think that um, it, it it feels like a universal language in many ways, but it can, there's a lot of confusing things in it. I mean, there's no, there's no other, I mean, maybe I'm wrong about this. I'm not a linguist, but there's no other like so quickly evolving language out there, is there? I'd say the, the key that Unicode, that Emoji has over every, you could compare it to some sort of Asian languages where one character can convey a whole meaning rather than words. But the difference with Emoji is that it's on every keyboard in the world with one tap. You know, it's not like if I invented anything else, there's Unicode's adding characters all the time. Hieroglyphs just got added in Unicode. Like at the, a lot of the original hieroglyphic characters and uh, ASCII art and things, but they're not one tap on the keyboard, right? They're, they might be in a font somewhere, whereas if you put something on billions of phones around the world and everyone has it and it's one tap away, it's going to evolve quickly. People are going to use it. It's convenient. I think it's sometimes it's easy to overlook just how universal... It is that apps can apps have always had emoticons, but it's never been there's never been a system wide color emoticon. Right. So were were you a big fan of emoticons? Like, did you use the emoticon smiley face a lot oh, before yeah. emoji? Yeah, yeah. That was uh, on the forums. You always had every forum had its own type, right? So yeah. if you'd be on one forum, often they'd use software where this type of forum would have the same ones. But sort of like Slack today, you can add custom what they call custom emojis, which mm -hmm. are effectively. Something similar, whereas mm -hmm. the, the forum communities, they could do that. So there were some that would have, they'd normally be animated and pretty over the top. They were, if anything, kind of more like Japan's yeah. original ones. Like you'd have the, the big dramatic vomit, you know. Right. <laughs> um, or you'd have people sort of uh, the head banging in the wall and very sort of over the top. But they were fun. Uh, MSN Messenger was very big in Australia when mm -hmm. I was growing up, more than... I guess AIM over mm -hmm. here, AOL Instant Messenger. Uh, I only used that for my American friends because, <laughs> I don't know, no one really used it in Australia. So they all had different emoticons. But I think MSN had some good ones. The, yeah. They had the two hugs. They had a man that hugged this way and then a woman that hugged the other way. It was like a left and right hug. So you could send one. You could say to someone like, here's a hug, and then they could send you the hug back. Oh, so that was nice. That is nice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, when we, like, you know, it's kind of funny to think of, like you said, the food on the stick or just mm. like the weird stuff or just like, that is so weird. But they're really not weird. They're really just from Japan. And it really, if you think they're weird, it probably means you just don't know enough about Jap Japan, Japanese culture. Um, talk a little bit about um, where they came from. Like, I know you're working on uh, some of the history of, of where all the emoji came from. Talk a little bit about that. So, one, one thing that's missing, right? So, we started, um, well, I started Emojipedia five years ago and it was only focused on Apple's emoji set. Uh, that was the first vendor outside Japan that had a color emoji set. Google quickly added a black and white one, but no one liked it because it's black and white and they're these awful little alien creatures. It was no good. Um, and then there was already a record on the, on the internet. You could already find three of the original Japanese, what they call Japanese carrier emoji that each company, each phone company in Japan had a different set. Mm -hmm. um, over time, they made them slightly closer to each other. So they almost had the same set, but they kind of weren't very compatible. One thing that's fun is people could buy... Like today, if I send you an emoji and you don't have an updated phone, you get a question mark. Or mm -hmm. if I send it to you and we've got different types of phones, it might look a bit different. But the problem they had in Japan was that I might send you a piece of cake and you might get the sushi because I'm like a completely different character. They hadn't standardized it. Um, and what happened is that no one was documenting the evolution of the Japanese emoji mm -hmm. sets from 1999 until Emojipedia started in 2013. Uh, so what... I'm doing now is we're going back and documenting that were probably each company in Japan probably had about five major updates over those years where you'd have something that starts as a gavel and then it turns into something that looks kind of like a mallet and then it turns into something that looks like a hammer and then Apple comes along and we're only aware of what happened in the Western world and you don't see the evolution of how these changed. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the woman doing this, some platforms had a woman, some had a man, some of them just looked like a person behind a counter. So... It's taking a long time, but that's what we're doing. We're going back, getting old hardware, playing with old Japanese phones, and thankfully, um, it's taking time, but it's really rewarding to see. We've just about finished one company, SoftBank, which is the one that Apple worked with uh -huh. in Japan. So Apple's set looks a lot like SoftBank's set, but it's kind of interesting that you've actually got a, about a 14-year history before Apple showed up to see, oh, that's what 
that's where our emoji today came from. And you can actually see if the meaning changed over time. That's so interesting. I know there's already a part of Emojipedia where you can see the change. Like I know with the shell, like the shell used to be like a, one of those. like A, a fan yeah, shell and uh -huh. now it's a spiral shell. Why? Why? Right. why? Yeah. Uh, you know what? That one, that's a, and some of them, some of them there's no good reason. Yeah. Or if you could get to the right person at Apple, they might tell you. Um, that one, I know the name when it hit Unicode, the name became spiral, spiral shell. So, so I don't know. The reason for that happening, but I guess someone at Apple at the time went, well, until now this has had no formal name. So we've drawn a shell, they, they weren't in the standard, Unicode for whatever reason has called it spiral shell. So I guess what we're going to do is we're going to, to make it make it match the standard, which they don't always do. So yeah, you can see anyone on the video feed, if you click on the Apple image, uh, if you, then you'll see the history. If you, There you go, you see that drop down there and you can see that if you go to the bottom oh. there, you get a different type of emoji so some of these there's no record of how or why maybe a designer just went huh wouldn't this be cool if it looked like that and often that's what happens with apple apple will do something they have far more sway legal uh, technically they don't at a unicode level apples appear with the other vendors but the difference is that every year apple releases a new ios update and hundreds of millions of people have it on day one Android and the other platforms, they work differently. They roll out in different countries. Google will say, oh, we're starting this rollout today. But then you ask around, does anyone have the rollout today? No, we've got it next week, the week after, the month after. Mm -hmm. um, so Apple gets a lot of dominance in what their image looks like. And so sometimes they might on a whim just decide, oh, we want to change our image. And then if enough users of other vendors complain and they say, hey, Google, my image doesn't look anything like the Apple one. The other vendors are probably more likely to change theirs over time because Apple kind of gets out the gate with a lot of users of that emoji design and the other vendors don't have that on day one. Mm -hmm. So speaking of Apple changing emoji, um, the gun emoji, they changed it to a water gun emoji. I know you have some, some thoughts on that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this was the big, this is probably, I think this was the first crossover cultural emoji event that, ever, that made the wider world realize there is a standard for emoji. Um, they can look different on different platforms. They can change. I don't. I think before then, people were sort of passively aware. But honestly, we've all got lives to get, get right. on with. Right. We knew <laughs> the Google emojis were rounder and looked right. like little gumdrops. But I, that's as far as I knew the difference. <laughs> and you're in. You know, you're in tech, and the, for the average person down the street, I just think they kind of go, "Oh yeah, cool. My pictures look a bit different than yours." If they even have ever noticed that, mm -hmm. I think. The gun emoji, though, is obviously, especially in the US, a culturally significant issue. And what happened for anyone that doesn't know is that one day Apple released an iOS update and suddenly what used to be the pistol, a weapon, looked like a water pistol or a, a, a toy gun. And it sort of felt like it came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, people sort of said, well, the Unicode standard says it's a pistol, but in the end, it's up to companies how they draw it. It's not up to Unicode. And the, the challenge was that all of a sudden, overnight, we had... A situation where Apple probably they never commented on the record about why they did it. Presumably, if I'm Apple, they looked at their keyboard. They go, "Gun violence is an issue in the U.S. In particular, that they don't want to promote their phone with a gun on their keyboard." I presume. Um, so they did this, but the challenge being that obviously, then people with an iPhone might tell their friends, young kids or whatever, like hey, I've just got this and come on over with it. And they're sending what they see as a toy and everyone else gets the gun. Um, so I thought it was problematic. I felt like for something that big, they probably should have either had a cohesive strategy with the other vendors. Maybe they thought it'd be a PR win. Maybe they thought they'd trump the other vendors and the news cycle would say, Apple, amazing. They've got rid of the gun. And then the other vendors quickly go, oh no, we better change ours. We look bad now. But the opposite happened. Apple did it. Everyone kind of went, Oh, like we kind of get it, but now you're the only one and now you've made it worse because there's different things on different platforms. Mm -hmm. And so I think they were expecting a PR win and they didn't get that. Yeah, so they were expecting <clears> everyone <throat> to just get Bluetooth headphones if they were going to take away the headphone exactly. jack. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I think they thought that it would be a PR win, they'd do it, the other vendors would quickly fall in line. Eventually they did. What happened is two years passed, the other vendors dug their heels in. Some that I spoke to, uh, Google at the time said, Oh, we kind of want to do what the majority of other companies do. We don't want to have a, the outlier. And right now, Apple's the outlier. We're not going to budge. Pretty much every company said that. Uh, eventually, Samsung and WhatsApp both did it. 
And then the other vendors went, okay, fine. Apple and Samsung are clearly industry leaders in mobile. Uh, WhatsApp's very popular in Europe. So then very quickly, within about three months, all the other companies switched it because, you know, that which is consistent with their opinion. They always said, we don't strongly feel like it, which way it should go. We just mm -hmm. want it to be consistent. And that's what it so is. So now they're now. all water. They're all water pistols now. They're all, they're all toy, mostly green, orange guns. Mm -hmm. And some people are still very upset by it. I'm... I don't mind. I, th I, I think it, as long as they're consistent, it's fine. Um, it was just very confusing when one would show a toy and one would show a weapon. That was a bad time. Right. That was the bit. I mean, that was the obvious time when people weren't really thinking about what you're sending is coming out as something else. Yeah. Um, but that's still sort of an issue because some of them are, uh, everyone doesn't know what they mean. Like the crying laughing emoji. Like a lot of people think that's just the crying emoji and then you know they'll say like my dog died and then you'll send the crying laughing emoji yeah. and <laughs> hurt yeah. someone's feelings yeah don't do that <laughs> yeah. so um and then there's been you've been involved in some court cases uh that have dealt with this there's the the one um with the the tongue sticking out the zany face yes <laughs> jeffrey rush old yeah. mate jeffrey rush in australia uh <laughs> not an actual old mate <laughs> It did live very close to me in Australia, incidentally. Never met him, though. But uh, nonetheless, the what's happened recently in Australia is that actor Jeffrey Rush, uh, I'm going to say, alleged to have been sort of harassing one of his workmates um, and sending her text messages after hours. One in particular said something like, I think about you more than is socially appropriate, which is a creepy message to send mm -hmm. someone. Yeah. Um, and he sent the, 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 a wacky face afterwards with the tongue out, a one eye open, one eye closed. And this ended up in federal court in Australia. Um, and, and the issue being, obviously, this wasn't the key part of the case, mm -hmm. but the, the, the case was basically newspapers had reported on this. They said, oh, you're defaming me. So the text messages all came out and his lawyers brought Emojipedia to the bench to say, Your Honor, uh, this emoji means you're sort of joking or kidding. So therefore, when my client said something creepy before it, it meant that he was kidding. And Jeffrey Rush himself said, uh, yeah, and I, I didn't even want that emoji. It was the closest thing I could find to a Groucho Marx face, is what he said. <laughs> um, and the, the federal judge basically said, I don't care what Emojipedia thinks. The context is what matters. Uh, so let's just put that let, let's put that away for now. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know what the outcome. The case could still be ongoing appeals and all that sort of thing. But nonetheless, that does come into it. And mm -hmm. there have been other court cases where people have called on me to assess either come in as an expert witness, and they'll sort of say we'll have discussions, and, and they'll say, well, here's what our uh, person that we're involved in talking to has sent someone, and I'll have to say like, what platform was it on? You know, do, right. is that a screenshot from their phone or from the other person's phone? Yeah. Because that could make a difference. If they're, if you're trying to get me to comment on what this emoji means, at the mm -hmm. very least I need to know which emoji they were seeing at the time. Don't send me what someone else received because that's not that's not their intention. Right. Uh, and so it could, it could get yourself into hot water if you... Don't send creepy messages and you're probably fine. Yeah, exactly. The, the words the, spoke for yeah, themselves. Right. The but emoji I, didn't yeah. er, erase that. Yeah. Maybe with the gun, though, that could be one where you could say, is it threatening if you send the water pistol to someone? And if you could show that everyone had the water pistol emoji, not a gun, maybe you go, no, that wasn't a threat. But I yeah. guess we're not all getting taken to court over a small emoji string. Um, I have had one situation where the police in the UK... Just out of the blue, I don't even know. My email address isn't. You can find it. Don't 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 send me email. But like, you can find it. But it's not super obvious and around. But somehow yeah. they tracked it down, and they sent me an email. Just I'm out at a friend's house somewhere, and it sort of said, "Oh, hi, Jeremy. We're hoping you can help with this investigation. We've got what appeared to be an intercepted message of some kind, just out of the blue. Just like, can you help us decipher it? It was a string of emojis." Um, it's a while ago now, so I don't think I'm busting any. I don't think I'm busting any cases. Sorry, police, if you are, but you didn't tell me it's private. You just sent it to me. Exactly. It had some. It didn't mean anything in it. It was a string of vaguely some Japanese characters that you know the ones that often have meanings like congratulations or this is a bargain, um, and then swords and knives and sort of threatening looking things. And I think they were wondering specifically when you put all this together, does it mean anything? That we're not aware of. Is uh, there some secretive meaning? And you're a no. translator. Yes, and in the end, and the, there was, and I checked with. I've got a few people in Japan who are quite helpful as well. 
just to check. Yeah. If you know the individual meaning of these emojis, but just in case. And no, it was sort of. I think they'd sent some threatening looking emojis and then some random ones at the end. <laughs> yeah. And the police are probably sitting there being like, have we cracked the case? And no, I don't no. think so. Oh. Sorry, oh. guys. <laughs> well, it is funny because I remember, um, you know, when, before iPhones, when uh, communication was done, when online communication was done, mostly during to email, like I never would use emoticons. Like mm. I always... I did not like the smiley face in email because I felt like your words should speak for themselves. Like, and if you had a smiley face, that's confusing to me. Like just, but now I feel totally differently. And I think that's mostly because it's so much personal communication, which is different like than work communication. How do you feel about emoji use in the workplace? I'm all, I'm all on board, obviously. <laughs> um, I'm in a fortunate position. I didn't have a real job, but... Um, I don't, You're I mean, <laughs> chief emoji officer. Right. I have a job where I don't have a boss. I'm the boss. Mm -hmm. And that's always... I'm aware that's a luxurious position. You know, the fun thing that bosses do. But they say the more powerful you are, the less words you use in emails. Mm -hmm. So you get people who are that's like, true. the boss boss, and you'll write this long email proposing everything, and they'll write, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then the further down the chain you are, the more you need to say, well, there's this and there's this option. Right. I think emojis become, our work and personal life is sort of blurred in recent years. Yeah, that's years. true. Um, th there's no longer the whole, this is the office, this isn't often. Mm -hmm. Even if you try and keep a different personal life, you know, that's a, a noble goal. But just in reality, you're going to work with people. Sometimes they're going to say to you, hey, do you mind if I just message you this instead? It'll be quicker for this other thing. And then you're sort of in a personal space. So you send an emoji there. Then via email, you're like, why wouldn't I send an emoji here too? Mm -hmm. And there have been some studies done showing that people take you less seriously if you're using emojis in emails, which might be the case if you don't know someone. I view it as being friendly. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe, maybe I do think of someone as being less... I'm not intimidated by them if they put a smiley, but I like that. I think that's that's welcome. I don't like uh, someone that's too aggressive via email. If someone does send me a, a thumbs up at the end or something, I'm like, that's good. I know they're happy. I'm not I'm not left wondering, oh, were they upset? Were they were yeah. they annoyed? Or so I think it's good. Right, because I mean, email can be. I guess that's sort of the difference now. It's like email can be a little aggressive sometimes. It, it's the way that you interpret it. I right. mean, there's so much interpretation there when you're not speaking face to face to someone. So I guess really, yeah, like adding a, an emoji at the end um, does sort of take away the like. The purist might argue if your words are good enough, you don't need it. But I just think, what's the harm? What's the right. harm in being over emphasizing that we are good? Yeah. Because sometimes you just can't tell when someone says in an email, you know, as I mentioned previously, which is normally you didn't read my email. Yes. Um, but maybe they didn't mean to phrase it that way. And honestly, the presence of any emoji, really, you're not using emojis if you're mad via email, right. generally. Right. Uh, I think just that sort of thing, you could uh, you could make the case you shouldn't need to do it or whatever, but I'd make the case, why not? We live in right. different time zones sometimes. You send yeah. an email, 10 hours passes. Why not be 100% clear? Right. Yes, exactly. I know that if someone, yeah, like if Lisa sends me an email, like, I need to see you later emoji, uh -oh. then <laughs> I'm not getting fired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to see you later. It's not a good email without an emoji. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Well, she jokes, I, any email I get, I always assume the worst. So you know, she always now says like, oh, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, and that, it's quicker, right? Rather than saying, Megan, it's okay. Yeah. But uh, can I speak to you later? Yeah. Just put the emoji at the end. Right, put the smiley. Exactly. Put anything. Put a yeah. unicorn. Put a, put a, a, unicorn. a clover. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like. Um, well, we should take a break. Um, I have so many more questions to ask you. I we haven't even talked about World Emoji Day, which you started. I want to talk about that. Um, I want to um, talk about some of the other, why there aren't certain emojis. Mm. And, um, and I have so many more questions. But first, I want to tell you about a totally free service. This is our sponsor, Captera. Now, if you are a business and you're looking for software that's designed for your business, you should check out Captera. I know we all have specific needs for our business. Um, you can do things, you can sort of uh, MacGyver your way into figuring out how to make some software work, but why do that when you can find software that fits your business needs to a T? Go to captera.com 
slash triangulation and do some searching. Captera is the leading free online resource to help you find the best software solution for your business. With over 700,000 reviews of products from real software users, discover everything you need to make an informed decision. You can search more than 700 specific categories of software, everything from project management to email marketing, even yoga studio management software. There's really specific software. There are so many devs out there developing software and you can find one that fits your your business needs, no matter what they are. Captera makes it easy to discover the right solution fast. Join the millions of people who use Captera every month to find the right tools for their business. So go to Captera, that's C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A.com slash triangulation for free. You can find the right tools to make 2019 the year for your business. Don't just go to Captera, go to Captera.com slash triangulation, C A P. T-E-R-R-A dot com slash triangulation. That's how they know that we sent you there. And we thank Captera for their support of triangulation. Okay, so uh, emoji emergencies. <laughs> <laughs> I've used that, you used that word in a, in a talk and I wanted to bring it up um, because it's a great word. Um, but what are some emoji emergencies? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you know what? You, you, emoji can cause all kinds of trouble situations you have sort of situations like we talked about with the different interpretation of things that mm -hmm. go on um situations where companies send things out and they don't know there's an alternative meaning to something mm. that can be a, a big uh, issue do you uh, have a good example for that or um, is it not appropriate i mean in the early days so definitely a few companies that would tweet about fresh food and things and send out the the eggplant mm -hmm. and that sort of thing uh more and more these days i think the in the last year or two, companies know. They know to look up, what am I sending? Mm -hmm. um, you can look out of touch sometimes. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't call that the... That's when you sort of... You're a very staid politician or someone and you suddenly start using emojis and everyone's like, this doesn't feel like you. Uh, there's definitely been instances a, a few years ago where there have been celebrity fights where I don't know who these people are, but they'll someone will send something that they think is friendly and it's very aggressive particularly mm -hmm. at the time samsung had a very divergent emoji set so shall we say where every face looked quite different to the others so that definitely would see some meltdowns there where emoji pd would get dragged into it to be like what's going on here i see this they see this who's right and the answer was just, uh, you're both right. Uh, complain to your companies. If you think your company's more wrong, you complain to them. And over time, Samsung in particular have brought their emoji set looking a lot closer to Apple. Yeah. Uh, so they're, in general, are they all looking more alike than they have in the past? Yeah. The last year was probably 2018 was the year where, I think for a while, the sort of companies have pride as well. They don't want to just be seen. They have their own ideas, their own design teams. They don't want to be seen to be just copying Apple. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think on the other hand, they, if their users are just saying, look, we want it to look more like this, and Apple tends to get it to the users first, in the end, they've got a choice to make. Do we want to be bold and say our emoji is better? Or do we want to say, well, let's try and make it. It doesn't have to look visually the same. It might be glossy or not glossy or have a different shape. But yeah, more and more in the last year, nearly all the vendors, there's no major issues anymore i wouldn't say uh, maybe the last one is the hug which is sort of the jazz hands some vendors still show it oh. like this which is nice it's like a hug but then nearly everyone shows it like this like jazz hands and you've got to make the call and nearly every vendor switched to jazz hands because well that's how you're using it you're using it to be excited it's used effectively as jazz hands not as a hug so yeah. the fact it's called hug is kind of irrelevant but a couple of companies they still they still Facebook emoji one. They still want it to look like a hug because, I guess, they're being true to the standard, and that's that's the question. So I see on these the emoji decks. What's emoji decks? Emoji decks. It's like there's a few companies that their whole thing is licensing or making emoji images for other companies to use, and there's emoji one, uh, which their whole thing is licensing. If you have a project and you want to use emojis, and for whatever reason you don't want to use the platform ones, maybe you want to print them, and there's some licensing issue. Mm. Uh, emoji Dex is like that, but they're from Japan, so often they're 
You know when you see the memes on Tumblr? Do you ever see this? So people do emoji reviews and they review every version of an emoji and they'll be like, oh, here's the cute turtle. I want to take him home. And they'll be like, here's this turtle. He looks like he's had too much to drink. And here's this turtle. I haven't know. seen those, oh, but I'm clearly going to do that They're as soon very as we're fun. done It's a talking. very big format on Tumblr in particular <laughs> where people take every vendor one by one, but because they tend to screenshot Emojipedia to do it and they'll commentate them uh -huh. all. But Emoji Dex is always at the bottom and it's always the most out there. Yeah. <laughs> so it sort of often ends up being sort of the punchline that they'll be like, and what the, what the hell is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. In some ways, they're more authentic to Japanese anime right. manga. Uh, they're sort of, there's a reason they look like how they do. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's just because some of their designs haven't been updated in a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have a particularly big market share, but that's their goal is that they're there to license just like everyone else. And some of them are pretty cute and expressive. You know, they, mm -hmm. they're definitely the wacky set. And I don't think they feel any compulsion to look like the others. I yeah. think they're more going, no, no, this is the best way to do this. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it. So emoji uh, are more like... They're, they're socially relevant. I mean, you know that. Uh, I think people make fun of that a lot. But really, um, they do, do you think that they reflect what's going on in the world? I mean, with, you know, changes with the skin color emoji and then, you know, with the different families. Um, how, how do you think they reflect what's going on in the world? And are they a little bit ahead or behind? I think sometimes they're ahead. It depends on where you look in the world, right? If um, Some countries are more conservative than other countries, but there's no doubt that companies like Apple, Google, they, they want to reflect what their users want. And they also kind of want to project their corporate values, let's say. They, so it's sort of a mix. Sometimes they work well. Sometimes those two things are in alignment and then something will happen. Um, I, th we, I think emoji often is somewhat ahead of the curve. It, it's aware that there's a representation side of it. It's not just Unicode is a standards body. In theory, you'd only encode things that are going to be the most popular. But there has to be some wiggle room because like, otherwise every minority wouldn't get anything on a keyboard. You'd mm -hmm. go, well, too bad, you're too small. And that's not how we feel like a fair society should work. Mm -hmm. So um, things like skin tones were added a few years ago. That was probably a pretty big oversight. Either when they came from Japan, either the emoji should have been converted to make them all just smileys, maybe throw the humans out would have been an easy option in retrospect. Possibly that would have been the best option is to get rid of all the humans and just have the circular people. Um, but since you had people, you can't just have only white people on a keyboard and you can't have just the active roles being men, which was the other problem mm -hmm. that people had, that the runner was a man, the girl doing this was a woman, mm -hmm. the police officer was a man, the girl doing this was a woman, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. it was, um, yeah, the, the definite issues like that. And right now, Unicode's looking at things like uh, couples with mixed skin tones. Uh, right now, they're mostly just excluded. You can't change a skin tone if there's more than one person mm -hmm. uh, because there's a lot of combinations if you can change every person. But drafted for this year, there's uh, two people holding hands, man and woman, two men, two women. Uh, potentially, this week, there's a discussion about also having two gender-inclusive people that have no specific gender assigned to them, also holding hands with different skin tones. Is there a gender inclusive single emoji? There is, there's three that got added last year. So that's not universal and that would be, that's where Unicode kind of dips their foot in the water where some people would say, well, absolutely every emoji should have three options. Mm -hmm. You have a man or a woman and one that's somewhere sort of in, in the middle. Um, other people either feel like they either don't want to see that or they just don't think it's important. Uh, so what Unicode did recently is they added a child, an adult, and an older adult, and they're sort of a pair for the boy and girl, the man and woman, and the older man and the older woman. Uh, but what you don't have are things like two people holding hands that don't have a gender. You mm -hmm. have to be men or women, and all the professions don't have a lack of gender. So Unicode's slowly adding more of those. I know there's been, I've talked to vendors, and some of them don't have a philosophical issue. They're just saying that we, it's hard to design. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're saying, like, if we make a person that's sort of in between, sort of non-gender specific, it kind of ends up looking like they're men quite often. You kind of squint and you see short-ish hair. Uh, I think that's a challenge, but I think they'll get to it. Mm -hmm. I, I do think that sometimes just for language purposes too, you want to say, like, oh, I went to the doctor and you don't want to have to pick the man or the woman doctor, or I'm going to see the doctor or something. Right. Sometimes gender is, it's not even about just self-representation. Yeah. Sometimes it's just practical. You just want to say like, oh yeah. Um, yeah, the, the firefighter came around and you don't want to go, was it a woman or was it a man? So maybe if there was a, a middle ground, you could go, doesn't matter. I'll yeah. just pick the middle one.
Well, I, when I was research, researching for this article, I, I uh, read a piece of you had been interviewed by Megan Rose Dickey for TechCrunch, um, and she is black, and she um, said that she had texted back and forth with a friend who used the black, the darker skin toned emoji, and she thought the person, she had assumed the person was white, uh, but then she reached out to her and she said, yes, I am white. And she said, why do you use the dark yeah, colored yeah, yeah. skin emoji? And the the woman responded that she felt like it would be oppressive to use the white colored skin emoji. Mm. And she said, no, it's not. That's, you know, it, it's sort of the other way. Like, it feels like you're appropriating. It's weird when you use the black skin tone. Yeah. If, when you're white. Let's yes. Say. And yeah. And I all like I always use the yellow one. Like that's just my that's my way of saying um but what Megan pointed out, Megan Rose Dickey said that um like when every white person uses the yellow one it becomes the white person emoji. So it's like all the white people using the yellow and then why don't we just express who we are? So I thought, well, that's a good point. So I've started using the white person emoji. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I still use the yellow. Um I I absolutely understand the position. It's a tricky position that as a white person, the yellow is close enough. Honestly, yeah. if if you, especially for the families, that's always been a bit of beef that a lot of Emojipedia users, we get some feedback about having sort of, oh, I want a family member where it looks more like me with blonde hair or red hair, but nearly all the feedback is always, we want a family with darker skin tone. And you never get that from white families because the yellow is close enough. It's mm -hmm. not meant to be white, mm -hmm. but in reality, it looks close enough to a white family. But if you have a black family, it looks nothing like you, mm -hmm. you know, and it's all fun. You've got all the individual emojis of a black man, black woman, black thumbs up. And then you've got the yellow family. But really, it's not meant to be white. It looks kind of white. Yeah. Um, I think it is weird when white people use a black thumbs up. Like, what are you trying to say? Yeah. Like, you know, it's sort of, a, are you trying to be funny? Is, is that... Is it, is it an attempt at humor? Yeah. If it's not humor, I, I don't even know why, what the purpose would be of that. Right. Well, it. I mean, it's sort of, there's the idea of like the minstrel shows that it brought up with Megan, mm. Megan, you know, and it's like, that's something you might not have even thought about, but yeah. that is, I mean, it's, it's part of your identity and yeah, I think it makes sense if, you know, you don't want to hurt someone. I, I don't want to un unintentionally hurt someone. No. Even with emoji. Yeah. And, and on, honestly, I mean these issues dip into real societal issues where, mm -hmm. for instance, white power is very different than black power. You know, there's mm -hmm. sort of, there are cultural issues whereby if you're a minority group in any way, it might be fine, but it's easier to say I'm proud to be black than I'm proud to be white. Yes, they're fine statements, but out of context, they're very tricky mm -hmm. situations. And sometimes some nerds or some people that get into the standards, they're very like, well, what's the difference? It's all the same. And you're like, you have to view these in the society we're in and if any group is being sort of oppressed in any way it's more probably it's it's better that you can say well yeah be proud of who you are mm -hmm. it's tougher to be saying white power isn't a thing that you want to be out there promoting and that's why i'm a little bit conscious of things like the white thumbs up am i trying to be like this is a white thumbs up yeah or am i just trying to send a thumbs up so for me i send the yellow but i, I try to not ascribe ill intent to anyone because right. n not everyone no one's sending them my grandparents aren't sending me a white thumbs up yeah. because they're thinking white power they're just right. doing it because they go oh cool yeah. it's kind of like my hand yeah well i had only thought of doing the white with it's where it says hair and yeah. like white dark hair it looks more like me yeah i get it yeah i do that actually I'll t uh, for the gestures the hand gestures yeah, i use yellow. Still yellow for the people if i'm representing me i use the the whitest guy with the black hair yeah I still get a lot of people uh, one popular feedback item is that People want sort of the brown hair with light skin tone that you sort of have to pick very white and blackish hair or you get the blonde person and then you get to the middle one which has a fairly tanned skin tone. Mm -hmm. I feel like those people can deal. They can mm -hmm. manage. Like, I get it. There's definitely a gap. There are plenty of people in the world with white skin and lightish brown hair. They don't have an emoji, but at some degree you have to, you have to figure out where do you prioritize. Is there an upper limit of how many emoji there can be? sort of is um there's a believe it or not we think our phones are real smart and we're in 2019 but emoji fonts take up quite a bit of ram a bit of memory on phones oh. uh, because they're one tap away they're accessible in all the apps and there's not that many things system-wide like that so that is one issue if we added this mega emoji font today that would be an issue that would still be an issue that you have this in ram in memory the whole time so vendors are keen to not there's always more memory every year, but they don't want 10,000 
emojis. You know, they're happy to increase on a small way. There's also the keyboard picker. Like, mm. let's say you have 10,000 emojis. How do you pick them? Search is, is there. It's good. Auto-suggest search is on Gboard. It's not on iOS. It's on the Mac. It doesn't work very well on the Mac, but it is there. Um, yeah, there, there's no hard limit. Unicode has space as well, but Unicode has plenty of space. So it's kind of a manageability issue as well. They, all these get tagged. Uh, Apple, for instance, renames every emoji with a text-to-speech description that's different than the Unicode standard. Oh. So they have to internationalize, set every language in the world. Right. When you read this emoji out, how does it say it? It will say, mm. it will say different things to the name. It might say uh, a family with two mothers and two daughters. And it will say, you know, a, a mobile phone with an arrow pointing here. Or it will describe a face with blushing cheeks. It might not be the official name, but it might tell you that. So I don't think vendors suddenly want thousands and thousands because they'd have to update all the descriptions mm -hmm. and, and do it in one go. Do you know every emoji? Hmm. I couldn't name them all. If you gave me a, if you gave me a, if you locked me in a room and told me to write everyone down or I would be killed in a dungeon, <laughs> I might be able to get to them all. I think with enough time, I might be able to get to them all. That's something I'd like to add in the future to triangulation, but, um, the but dungeon, if I said the tri like, The yeah. triangulation yes, dungeon. Yes. And now we take you to the set we have over here. <laughs> Do you really know tech? <laughs> and you can only come out when you prove that you are the expert in this field. I love that. But if I said something like, is there a garlic emoji, would you know? Uh, this year it's on the short list. Oh, okay. I so those that. kinds of questions, yeah. you know. Cauliflower? I, uh, no, no cauliflower. There's broccoli. Uh, cauliflower is fairly distinct. I think if a good proposal came in, mm -hmm. it might make the cut. Uh, onion is also on the short list for this year. Mm. Mm, waffle is on the short list. The, it's kind of funny. Right now we're in the in-between stage where this year's list hasn't been finished, but some are already going onto next year's list. Oh. So it's, it's, I get a bit muddled soon where suddenly people start asking me, when this year's list gets published in March of 2019, often people say, oh, what's on the new list? And my head's already on next year's list. And then you kind of get a bit, I get in a bit of a muddle then where I go, like when you speak to product people at sort of these companies and you talk about, oh, I loved the iPhone last year or whatever. And they're going, what did we do last year? Like I'm, in their head, they finished working on that three years ago or right, something. Exactly. You know, they, and, they, and you think, how, do, how don't you know about your own product? But right. they're, they're on a different timeline to yeah. the rest of us. What's the deal with those Twitter emoji where it's like associated with a hashtag? Ads. Like, they're okay. ads. So someone pays for that. Yeah. They're, okay. uh, do you get offended when those are called emoji? I think it's fine. I mean, I, th I get why it happens because they don't have a good name. Like yeah. what else are we going to call them to some degree? I don't strongly object to the phrase custom emoji. Uh -huh. I think that's fairly descriptive to say, oh, they're like Twitter's custom emoji set um, or Slack's custom emoji. I think that's fine. I think the challenge is maybe I'm... Maybe I'm hardened to it because my inbox is full of brands that every day be like, we launched our own emoji today. And you think when they say that as a headline that they've got or that we've a new emoji announced for a Megan Maroney <laughs> emoji and you go, oh, really? Why is that an emoji? I don't think Unicode would approve that. And you go, oh, it's just on, it's a sticker in an app or right. it's just on Twitter. Yeah. Um, so the Twitter ones, I think they're kind of cool. They're fine. Companies right. pay money yeah. uh, to have a little picture put after a hashtag. They only work on Twitter. They disappear when they stop paying money. <laughs> uh, so if you, if you sponsor a certain hashtag and you have it for a month or two and then you stop paying, that disappears. Mm -hmm. They fill a good gap. Brands mm -hmm. can't have their own emoji. Mm -hmm. Logos can't be emojis. They take years to get in. Not everything's appropriate. So they're good. I just get a bit bored when someone goes... Wow, we launched, we're a company and we've uh, released a new emoji. Mm -hmm. Like it's exciting. It's fine. It's, it's cool. Do your yeah. own thing. But it's not that exciting. Right. Oh, we paid a bit of money and we've got a picture on yeah. a site yeah. is, is my view. Um, so what, uh, I had a question and now I've forgotten what it was. Um, what have I missed? There's so many. There's questions. a lot going on. There's, <laughs> a, there's a lot happening with it all. Um, one thing I will tell you about the Twitter emojis is that they don't like to talk about numbers, obviously, but the first numbers that were reported was would cost a million dollars to get one of these. Oh. Um, I think that might have been an upper limit. I don't know whether that was one of these sort of, it was someone at Twitter sort of controlled leaking that to someone so yeah. that other brands kind of go, oh, yeah, we could pay a million dollars. Yeah. Sometimes they do it for free, like, but they're sort of editorial. Twitter could choose... For instance, I don't think people are paying for Merry Christmas or Happy Christmas. Right. Or there was um, like a Me Too emoji yeah, too. Exactly, Someone yeah. probably wasn't paying for that. Probably not. So yeah. there's a mix. You, and you can't tell as a user. There's no good way to know 
you'd probably tell because some of them are clearly a brand, <laughs> branded. Uh, Coke had one for a long time mm-hmm. in lots of languages. Um, but yeah, that's a popular thing. World Emoji Day had one for a while there. We didn't pay for that. They Twitter viewed it as a public oh. event, so they kind of went, yeah, well, we'll put that up there and that's their prerogative, which is thank you, Twitter, for the World Emoji Day <laughs> custom emoji. Uh, so yeah, tell us about World Emoji Day. We haven't talked about that. What, what is it? Why did you start it? How long has it been going on? World Emoji Day, uh, we've had four of them now, five? Hmm, not sure. <laughs> it's been going a while. Um, it's on July 17 every year because the iOS calendar emoji says oh, 17 right. on it. Um, people get a bit muddled on it. So the reason the 17's on the calendar is because that's when Apple first announced iCal uh. for Mac. So their team probably went, oh, cool. We'll put 17 on here. And it became like Johnny Appleseed, which mm-hmm. is like a name that Apple uses on Anything that needs a name, they'll put Johnny Appleseed mm-hmm. on there. And kind of since 2003, Apple started putting July 17 on things if they need a date because they could trace it back to this announcement. Mm-hmm. Uh, I originally was going to make a, a couple of years ago when I started it, I think it was 2014, I just thought it'd be fun that we have all these different days. Apple releases new emojis this day. Unicode does this. But I just wanted one day where I thought, anyone do whatever you want to do with emojis. Like, it'll be fun. doesn't have to be a big deal. I set up a Twitter account for it and just sort of announced it to go, hey, next week is World Emoji Day, July 17. And it was kind of funny that, I didn't know, I just thought it'd be a fun, I didn't think brands would jump on board. I thought it would just be, some people would post their favorite emojis or whatever, but by the end of the day, big companies had already started doing promotions and things. I was seeing promotions in India with radio stations going, hey, it's World Emoji Day, we're giving away CDs if you do the emoji or whatever. And I was like... I just made this up. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> set up a Twitter account, set up a little website, but I really hadn't done any, I didn't have press lists or anything. I hadn't been doing anything. I just tweeted about it and it got picked up as a thing. So the next year, did a bit more about a month early to say, hey, everyone, it's World Emoji Day next month. So if you're going to do anything, and every year more and more things started happening until, well, it's still going. Every year, well, we, we started running World Emoji Awards on that day where we'll get people to vote on their favorite new emoji or upcoming emoji, uh, sort of like best new talent, I guess. Uh, we've got a Lifetime Achievement Award, which has gone to the Laughing Crying yeah. emoji. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of fun. It's a bit tongue in cheek that yeah. it's sort of, it's fun, uh, but it is helpful. People like to vote and they like to vote on, uh, we've got sort of uh, most anticipated emoji will be one. What, what's on a short list that might come out next year? Mm-hmm. So people will vote. And then last year we had, the year before now, the Empire State Building lit themselves yellow for World Emoji Day, which was <laughs> bizarre just yeah. sort of being at these things. And we had Girls Who Code were there and the Emoji Movie crew were there. So Pat, there's me and Patrick Stewart up the Empire State Building <laughs> and very odd, very odd day. Yeah, all from just Googling something and not just, finding an answer. Yeah, just going, why not? <laughs> okay, favorite emoji. Favorite emoji oh, uh, changes a lot. Uh, right now, probably woozy face is pretty good. Woozy, woozy face, yeah. yeah, woozy yeah. new one. Um, I like that one too. The cold one, it's winter right now. It's it's quite good. And it's kind of a grimace too. I kind of just like it as yeah. a more flexible grimace. Yeah. Um, they're probably my main two right now. How about yourself? Do you have anything on the top of your head? Well, lately, I just checked my recently used. Yeah. I feel like I've been using the two hearts Yeah, a that's lot. good. That's a good one. I'm um, not even recently. sure exactly what that means and how it differs from the other hearts, but I just mm. feel like um, the it has two... has a good vibe. It's yeah. Good vibe. It feels like sending love. Yeah. No, I think so. They're kind love of floating in the, in the air. Yeah. They're maybe floating. it's... I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't send it. <laughs> maybe I'm sending the wrong message mm. with it. <laughs> I think you, you need at least some familiarity with the person. Okay. You prob- but you probably wouldn't send it to someone the first time you'd ever communicated with them, okay. right? Maybe you do. <laughs> <laughs> no, wow. This is why Megan has so time. many fans. Yeah. I, uh, I thought... I sort of see it as the hugs, but maybe I should mm. go back to the hugs so that I'm understood better. <sighs> you know what's quite good is a very... If you're worried about miscommunication, the new party face... That's a very positive. Uh, oh yeah, that's different hat. than the woozy face. Different right? than yeah, different than woozy. It's got the party hat. Yeah, it looks the same on all the platforms. Yeah, it's distinctly positive and couldn't be misinterpreted as mm-hmm. flirtatious in okay. any way. I quite like that as when we mentioned earlier about sort of do you want to just signal this is we're all good, mm-hmm. even if you're not having a party. That's oh, quite we're a good all one. Good. Yeah, oh, okay. that's like quite a good. Okay. You can't misinterpret party yeah. faces 
anything underhanded or the yeah. like. So I think that's quite good. I kind of just want an emoji that's like me, you mm. know? I mean, not, like I have my bitmoji, obviously, but <laughs> but like the emoji that I use all the time to mm. sort of mean, this, you know, thank, just as a response. You're pretty close to the Apple emoji woman though. Yeah, I could do that. Well, that's the other thing I've been doing, putting emoji in my Twitter handle according oh, yeah. to the season. Huh. But I didn't want to put the hearts for Valentine's Day because it's too early. Mm. So I, what, what do you have up there now? I do you just have put the shrug because I just like the shrug because it's kind of like what you got to do these do days. Do you have the shrug that looks like you with the dark hair and the white skin? I do, yeah. Can you see that there? That there. Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. I, except it's the Twitter one. The Apple one looks a bit more like you, let's say. That's sort of the Twitter website mm -hmm. has their own set. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still, you know, it's, an, it's a cartoon version mm -hmm. of you that yeah. I actually feel like the Apple one looks really like. Have you been at the yeah. Apple uh, yeah, office? Yeah, it was actually modeling? me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that was. what you've been up to in yeah. the last few years when you're not here? <laughs> yes. Just popping down for a session where they go, now can yeah. you do this? Can you put your hands to the side for us? <laughs> Hold it. Yeah. And next one. Exactly. Uh, hands on head. So um, Bitmoji, do you Bitmoji or do you feel like it's a, um, it's a, uh, it's anti. Bitmoji's a guilty pleasure. It's okay. fine. I mean, okay, they're ridiculous, do. right? Yes. They're over the top. Yeah. I know a lot of people, I feel like there's a lot of haters of Bitmoji as mm -hmm. well. Um, I think they're fun. They, they're also sort of tongue-in-cheek. They're deliberately cheesy and over the top. Mm -hmm. But they're fun. They're fun to send. They, yeah, you, they, you don't have to, they suggest things to you. you right. They could be seen as disingenuous and that you don't have to think. Right. They provide you with yeah. funny things. But I think in in the end, in the right context, you don't want to use it every time. Yeah. If every time I chatted to you and you just sent me a bit emoji yeah. back, I'd be like, oh, well, is that all we're going to do here? Right. I'm going to send you things and you're going to send me a bit yeah. emoji. But in the right context, they're yeah. just as good as a, a GIF or an emoji. It's all about who you're chatting to and right. when you're doing it. And I think Apple should go more cheesy with their Memoji. Mm -hmm. They're very authentic. Uh, they're fun. The tech is very good. Mm -hmm. But sometimes... They don't have enough emotion. They're good for representation, mm -hmm. Memoji, and they're good for video. But if you want to send a sticker, you can't really send an emotion. I don't know whether you've sort of, you sit there and you make a wink or whatever with yeah. your face, but it doesn't look like an emotion right. like Bitmoji does. Yeah. And also then you got to make sure you're not making like weird mouth sounds that yeah, are recorded. Like yeah. the... <laughs> I know. It's, it's, it, yeah, it's a bit much. And so I get it. They, it's smart. The companies, Google's doing it with Minis. Apple's doing it with Memoji. Huawei have their own... Uh, what they are about to call 3D cute emoji. Uh, oh, cute emoji. Yeah. I thought it was Q emoji. No, 3D cute. cute emoji is their new trademark. I think they've called it different things in different markets. They've had Q emoji in some markets. Um, anyway, it's kind of like me emoji, but real. I don't know. I don't like the, the Huawei one. It, it lacks mm. emotion, let's mm. say. And same with the Samsung one, it looks yeah. creepy as anything to yeah. me. I, my Samsung 3D emoji. Mm -hmm. Awful. I mm -hmm. just look, I, I wouldn't speak to that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't trust, I don't trust your Yeah, Samsung. whereas the Memoji is cute. Google's minis are very cute. They're very cartoony, so they're um, conceptually very good for representation. I kind of like the more realistic looking one, but it's maybe a personal preference. All right, one last question. Why do you think people are so fascinated by emoji? When it comes to fascination, I think the most interesting part is it forces conversations from the tech companies. It's a cultural shared phenomenon, right? That we used to have TV shows where everyone watched the same TV show and you could talk about it. We all watch different things now. We all talk about different things. Emoji is kind of the last remaining thing where everyone, you could say, hey, what do you think of this new emoji? Or what do you think of the way Apple did this or Google did that? It's sort of a, a shared experience and it forces sometimes slightly uncomfortable conversations that companies have to talk about race and gender and guns, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they're mixed in with fun stuff like the smileys and the food and the drink and, and all that. So I think it's like, we love food and drink. We like talking about that. We like talking about tech and emoji wraps it all up on a phone that everyone has. So I'd be surprised if we weren't fascinated by them. Jeremy Burge, thank you so much for coming on Triangulation. Jeremy Burge is the founder of Emojipedia, the CEO, chief emoji officer. That's me. Uh, half a vote on the emoji consortium. Yep, so. accepting bribes after hours. <laughs> yes, exactly. They're nonprofit, but you, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> Go to, uh, is it emojipedia.org? Yeah, the .org makes us look like a nonprofit, but we're a for-profit company. Okay, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much.
inviting me on. I think we had a good chat. Yes, I think so too. And thank you for joining us. Uh, I am Megan Maroney. I think I didn't mention that at the beginning. So um, now you know I'm <laughs> Megan Maroney. Also found on phones as the shrugging face. Yes, yes, that's me. <laughs> uh Triangulation records usually every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific, but you can watch it whatever time you want. You can just download it on your podcast app. You can also get it on YouTube. Just search Triangulation on YouTube or in your podcast app or Apple Podcasts. Subscribe to the show because that's how you get it uh, right away after. And um, also you can email me, Megan at twit.tv, if there's anything that uh, we talked about that you, if you feel differently about emoji, um, if uh, you want to comment on anything we said. I'd love to get emails or you can uh, also find me on Twitter. I'm at Megan Maroney and you can find Twit on Twitter and Instagram. Follow all our socials. You can do that. Um, just search for Twit in all the places where you're social. We'll see you next week on Triangulation. Triangulation.